what's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're reviewing round 18, Port Adelaide versus Gold Coast, which, well, how did it end up? It ended up, just as I think all of us had feared, it ended up us losing by two goals, 14 points in the end, uh, in a game that certainly was not the most appealing to the eye. Um, it was something that we choked, and by choked I don't mean Port were, you know, had a hefty lead and they choked the lead and lost. They choked themselves, really, in, in a game where they, you know, it was so crucial to us. You know, the the, the result meant that we either, you know, finished the round in the top four or finished the round outside the eight. And at this current stage, we're going to be finishing outside of the eight. Uh, in a loss that hurts, oh, this one hurts because... Whilst Gold Coast are a powerhouse at home and, you know, they've got nothing in the tank when they go away, they, they're they a good side. They, but, but they're gettable, you know, and this is a game where we had plenty of chances, you know, we had plenty, plenty of times where we should have scored from entries inside 50, plenty of times where our forward structure just lacked every sort of capability to get going. Um, it's very funny to me that, you know, we have Dixon... Finlayson and Lord and unfortunately Marshall got injured. Um, and to me, it, I think it needs a complete overhaul. And it's not just the individual players; it, it, it's definitely the way we're we're looking. Um, it, I think the second half we were a lot more manoeuvrable, going with the footy inside fifty. We lowered our eyes and we were able to hit targets. And I thought that created opportunities for our tools to be a lot more prominent in the air. Um, and there was a couple of times we got scores from inside 50s from contests because of competing tools. What didn't work was hitting a one-on-one -on -one target standing still. Um, and a lot of people will criticise Dixon in particular. But first game back, not playing at footy for three games, kicked a goal, competed. Uh, I don't think he was as bad as people think. I think a lot of people are taking their mindset of Dixon is so set that as soon as they see him do something bad. And yeah, he looks slow, he looks sluggish, you know, everything we expect. But at the same time, I don't think he was the worst forward in the day. Ollie Lord kicks his goal um, and goes missing for two quarters and pops up. Like, it's it's these things that, um, you know, are creating a lot of havoc and obviously Marshall going down with his injury um, it, it, is a, is a very big concern because I don't think he's going to come back for a couple of weeks looking at what he did. Um, could be worse, who knows. Uh, they stated in the release that it was a hip injury, um, which could be, could be related to his hip again, which would be such a shame. Um, but at the same time, he was not doing anything anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much in terms of that. But it's unfortunate for him. Um, but the one forward that really needs an overhaul and really needs a, a kick up the arse is Jeremy Finlayson. I've seen comments of, you know, could be the laziest footballer. Um, he is the worst forward. You know, I've seen all these comments and I sit here and go, there are so many times in this one game where you can spot Finlayson on the screen and he will either be jogging about, doing his thing, or he won't put pressure on anyone. He's waiting for the, the quick kick out the back. Um, he's waiting for his opportunity to shine. And he had that opportunity, you know, with a minute to go. Um, obviously, we weren't going to win, but, you know, there was like a small chance of something. You know, we've kicked two goals in a minute before type of thing. And he just come, goes back, lazy, a couple of steps, stabs at it, kicks to the left and shanks it. You know, that's... Jeremy Finlayson to a T, and I would be dropping Finlayson. His attitude sucks, in, in my honest opinion. Uh, I'm not sure what's happened, but he definitely needs a um, yeah a big question mark on him. And he's out of contract as well. So for someone playing with no contract, um, the way he is playing is pretty you know pretty piss poor, in my honest opinion. Just throughout the whole day. You know, Gold Coast's pressure was really, really elite across the centre line um, in transition. Um, I thought they they created our turnovers, but also you know there's a lot of turnovers for us that we misfired. I think you know that we tried that corridor. It's funny like we sit here and we, we us as fans sort of like oh yeah we play corridor, but I don't really see the prominent factor about it compared to what the commentators were saying. Uh, and today for some reason. I'm not sure why, but when the commentator said Port will look to go through the corridor, 
We went there every single time. And I like that. I like the, you know, the, the balls to do it, really. Um, but, it, yeah, I think the skills that we were using um, that we had today were just not up to standard to execute that. Um, obviously, Houston was great off halfback. Uh, I thought Butters was really, really good in the second half. I think there's a couple of times where he wasn't... Um, I was prolific. I don't think he was as involved as much, but the goal he kicked at the end of the third quarter was crucial, and he still had his impact. Rosie's first half was, I thought, really, really good, but again, didn't have as much of an impact as he wanted to. Um, you know, I thought Kane Farrell. I don't know what's happened to his short stabbing 15, 20 meter kicks, but they're not working anymore. Um, so his kicking's gone off a bit, uh, which is a shame. Too many turnovers today. I thought Burgoyne's game was pretty good. Um, you know, he, he had his moments. I thought Boke's game was really, really good, but he lacked um, not composure, but decision-making late. I think a couple of handballs he gave to or opposite, uh, to his teammates. You know, a bit of awareness is something that he didn't quite have there. Uh, but he kicked his goal, which just in his own segment needs to be appreciated because he had 15 consecutive behind, 17 games without a goal. Um, he's had in that time period two, I think, two or three goals taken away from, um, you know, score reviews. He's had <laughs> golden opportunities to kick. He also kicked two behinds today. But he finally got his moment in the last quarter. So that streak is now broken, which is good. Maybe that's a, a, you know, a release of the shackles. It's unfortunate it didn't happen in a win, but it made me happy. So I'll be taking that, um, yeah, taking that home with me. So that's all fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, like the players had their moments too many passengers today um, and yeah this is it's unfortunate because now our season is so much more in the balance um, and now there's a massive question mark on what we can do going forward I thought our defence held strong especially losing a player early and Lockie Jones with uh, concussion and neck uh, issues which by the way Alex Davies deserves a month and um, you know I, I, that is what we're trying to stamp out of the game and I'm very, very disappointed to see that. Obviously, happening to one of my own players, like one of our own players in Lockie Jones, is, is always a shame. Um, it, it, that brings a bit of extra anger to it. But, yeah, I thought Gold Coast were a little bit of a sniper-type attitude today. Like I get, like, last week, they were they had to grow up, but they didn't have to be, you know, like, quote-unquote pricks about it. Like, that's... I don't want to... I think the, the prick attitude they had going into today's game, there was a lot of, like, aggression about it. And it was, well, majority of the time, the players were well held. And it's what won them the game. Like, they were aggressive. They had pressure. And they were very, very significant in, in, you know, in how they played in that sense. But they really just didn't... Um, yeah. They, they didn't pick their moments quite as well. Um, there's also Malcolm Roses as well, who elbowed... Um, Logan Evans on the way through uh, when he was standing the mark, which I don't know how the umpires didn't see that either. Um, not that it you know, affected the game as much or the result. Like our, we have to own the result and move forward um, to next week against Richmond, which won't be an easy beat, but uh, you'd expect us to get the job done. So, yeah, another unfortunate, disappointing day to be a Port fan and it's a shitty result for 2024. Thank you very much for watching, poor fans. I really appreciate the support and everything. Make sure you get around the glass table coming out as well uh, this week and the latest episode. Uh, and plenty more fun to have there as well. But if you are new, please subscribe to the channel for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content to come your way. Unfortunate day's result, but at least we've got next week. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. And my name's Anthony. And as always, count the pair.